Australia and from a very humble magazine, Beloved Syria, considering Syrian perspectives, but I hope that it gets a general readership. And I particularly want to speak to four powerful women in Australia. Uh, they are the Foreign Minister, Larisse Payne, the Shadow Foreign Minister, Penny Wong, and Ida Buttrose, who is the chair of the ABC, yeah. and Kirsten Ferguson, who is the deputy chair. I think they're very powerful, but also open-minded and clever women. Yeah. So the question is, what can Australia do, particularly Australian women perhaps, to contribute to peace and the rebuilding of Syria? I think, uh, you know, this is where there is a lot of work that hasn't been done. I mean, although at the level of governments there are sanctions and unilateral measures taken against us, but I think Western people and Western women could do a lot more by connecting with Syrian women, for example, by uh, traveling, by seeing each other, by even through satellites, you know, holding meetings and conferences and talking to each other and trying at least to dispel the myth that has been created by uh, Western media uh, about Syria. Uh, unfortunately, because um, the, the media in the West is so strongly against us, and it is so strong, uh, we have to find other ways nowadays with the internet and with websites uh, being available. I think it is doable uh, to try and uh, connect with each other and, uh, you know, whether uh, through conferences or dialogue or workshop or seminar or whatever, to spread the word. Uh, we go back to what our grandfathers used to do. They used to spread the word. and. Uh, I think it's very important, it's really very important uh, to whether with Australian women or European women or American women or, you know, uh, British or people in general. Of course, uh, Western media marginalizes anyone who speaks the truth. Uh, once uh, you speak the truth, they consider you that you are uh, supporting the Syrian government, although the whole war, really, I would like to stress uh, to Australian audiences, the whole war is not about the government. It's about the people, and it's about our culture, and it is it's targeting our identity. But I think I, I am considered part of the government, right? The least affected people in this war were the government. Because obviously we still have to be able to get up and take a shower and get dressed properly and go to a warm office and present our country. So we were we did not go hungry. We we did not you know suffer what the villages in Latakia suffered. This is the truth. Uh, even when there is no oil or gas, we have to have oil and, and gas because the government has to function, has to keep on functioning because it's leading the country. So the Syrian government was the least affected. This is the truth of it. The Syrian people were worst affected. The Syrian women, the Syrian children, the Syrian ill people, the wounded people were worst affected. And therefore, to, to you know, all the terminology put in Western media, uh, 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 sanctions against the Shah al-Assad or sanctions against the Tayyip Shaban or against the government, it's all lies. It, it's not, a, even now in Iran, they're not harming. Now we had an Iranian delegation meeting with the president. They're not harming Jawad Zarif, the foreign minister. He has to have his private jet and he has to travel to Moscow and to China and to present his country and to be in good health and in a good position. But it is the Iranian people who are suffering because of the sanctions. So all these concepts have to be challenged by Western people. When somebody you know, speaks in the West, in Western government or parliament about this, someone has to answer them, to tell them this is a lie. You, you are not doing that. You are, you are targeting the people. You are perpetrating a crime against people. And so there, there has to be another way of, of handling issues or relations with, with other countries. So I believe there's a huge room for, for working together. 
I mean, during the war, I had the, I went on satellites with a conference in Germany, conference in Britain, a conference in the U.S. Uh, it, it was very useful, but I only had this, you know, invitation. Whatever invitation I get, I responded to because I believe in the importance of, of explaining uh, our issue and our cause to people uh, regarding, for example, the Palestinian problem also with all the horrible measures taken by Trump and by Netanyahu against the rights of the Palestinian people. Western people can do a lot, can do a lot to help. Uh, and and uh, I think it's good for everybody because it will help to uh, establish stability and peace uh, in the region and in the world. We believe that peace is connected. We believe that our lives are connected. We believe that our spirits are connected. And if we, if you have peace in Syria, it will somehow affect Australia positively uh, and vice versa. And so when Western people work uh, to help Syrian people or Palestinian people, they're also helping themselves because the more good you sow in the world, the more good you reap in the world in different areas. And so I hope that we will be able to join forces together, to connect together, to work together, to speak together, in order to make the world a better place for all of us. That's a wonderful way to finish. Thank, Thank you. you, Dr. Fazina. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I'm glad I made up for the library. <laughs> <laughs>